This Mobile Geeks video is powered by ASUS. So here at the Maker Fair, we've come across the guys from my DM. Hi guys! Hi! Hi. <laughs> so they have a really cool product they're going to bring into Kickstarter, and it draws with an LED. So you can see it right here. Hold it up. Yeah. So it actually paints light. So here's some examples. Here's a tiger. Here it actually is painting a logo. It's running Arduino, and that's how it's able to figure out how to do all this kind of stuff. Or you can just kind of make art. IDM, I-D-E-M. And uh, so check back on Kickstarter in September where these guys launch, because they're going to try to do different types of light bars to do different types of products. So let's go see what else we have here at Maker Fair Taiwan. And I'm here because, uh, well, for, for several reasons, because I hope that the Taipei Maker Fair is a very wonderful place to get to understand the whole spectrum of, of, of what making is all about. And because in Singapore we're also trying to do that, we're trying to bring the different kinds of makers together and trying to see if we can cross quality ideas. And I really, we really wanted to come here to get ideas from Taipei. But at the same time, we also wanted to come here to bring in some of the works that the makers in Singapore have, have been doing to sort of like show them that, okay, Singapore has a nice maker culture as well. But the maker scene in Singapore has been really growing. It's uh, kind of like um, when we started the Maker Fair in 2012, we had like maybe about 20 odd makers. It's a very, very small event, probably because nobody has really heard about Maker Fair. Then uh, over, the, over the last few years, it's really grown. Uh, not just in terms of the fair itself, but it's really grown. Uh, this year, in fact, we're going to have close to maybe 200 odd, 200 odd exhibits, 60 over workshops and, and stuff and within, the next, within the two days. But also, in addition to that, the, the maker scene is, oh, is really grown because there's a lot of buy-in towards the maker movement from different parties that the, the, the education ministry has brought in. They see the value of making and getting kids to learn. But what we also see additionally, and that's something that I've seen only in Singapore and in Taipei, is we've got a lot of very young children coming in as makers. So this year in Singapore, our youngest maker is six years old. For local culture, right? So, uh, for example, I went to Shenzhen Maker Fair last year, and Shenzhen Maker Fair tends to be a lot like a consumer electronic conference because, well, that's, that's what Shenzhen is. It's, it's, it's like mass, you know, all the startups and the manufacturing and everything. It's, it's really the tech. In fact, there's hardly anything that's artsy in, in Shenzhen. Whereas when we went to Tokyo, I was very impressed by the Tokyo Maker Fair because the, a lot of things that Japan has in terms of culture, you know, the, the otaku culture, the robotics culture, the comics culture, all these came together and many of the projects that you see, even if it could be an Arduino thing, it could be an Arduino that, that's powering one of these Japanese inspired characters, which, which is so close to the hearts of the Japanese because it's part of their lifestyle. So, it's, like, so it, it's very interesting to see how the culture comes forth in the way the, the makers work on their projects and also in the way that the makers actually exhibit. And we see also that in Singapore because Singapore has an education culture, very strong education culture. And um, I was just telling some of the makers yesterday because yesterday I was in fan too. Um, and I was just telling some of the makers that in Singapore this year we have, we have about 60 odd workshops and presentations. And they were telling me that that's really a record and, and, and it just doesn't happen anywhere else. And, and that's probably because Singaporeans like to teach. Yeah. They may not, you know, even if, if they are not very good at it, they still like to teach and to share and, yeah. and stuff, which, which I think comes out in, in the culture of Singapore. Yeah. And I think in Singapore we also get a lot of hands-on activities, a lot more hands-on than they would do. around a smartphone which turned us into modern slaves. Have you ever wondered what life would look like without a smartphone and what you could do without all your spare time and not constantly checking your screen? There are statistics where they're saying that in between two and three hundred times a day we're looking at the screen of our smartphones. Those guys have a solution for this. 
they're gonna they have an open source design for a case to blow up your smartphone safely. So you're just using this little pack of crackers, right? Just putting it in there, and on top of it goes your smartphone. And at the end of the day, you know, it's not only your smartphone that's gonna be done then. So we have a bunch of iPhone 6s here, but of course also the case that they have over here. So this is an open source design that basically frees you, frees you from you know the idea of becoming a modern slave to technology, which is by um, using your smartphone on a daily basis. I've never seen anything like this, but it's quite interesting. If you really want to get rid of your smartphone safely, make sure you get the proper case and just blew it up. I'm Sasha from Mobile Geeks here at the Makers Fair 2015 in Taipei. And if you want to check out the website, it's good night, night .wordpress com. Thanks for watching. Bye.